to play a character that becomes iconic. Our first guest did it twice. Our first guest, she did it twice. First is Florence on the Jeffersons. Yes. Then she did it as Mary on 227. Would you please give it up for the legendary Marla Gibbs? To people fan crushing on you when you hear this because this is such genuine love when you when you hear this um, to know that you are just you have your imprint on our minds and our hearts how does that make you feel wonderful yes because I love everybody and if they didn't watch I wouldn't nobody would know my name and we, and we know all of your episodes and everything you said and hand on your hip and just, oh my goodness. I, I, and I haven't seen, you look so beautiful. I have not seen you, yes. Okay, we ain't gonna never get the interview done. Y'all gonna clap on everything. They gotta, they just love you so much. But I haven't seen you, Marla, since your Hollywood Walk of Fame star ceremony when you received your star in Hollywood. <laughs> that was such a moment. It was, it was. When you got it and you got the star and, we, and everybody came out, it was like, I remember Kim Whitley and Anthony Anderson and Tisha Campbell, be, you, you, you were such a huge influence on us and you got up there. How did you feel getting your star? Oh, it was so fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, I never expected that. Oh, my gosh. It was Marla. all Regina's idea. It was Regina King's idea. And yeah. I remember when, and when it was being spearheaded and everybody we got behind going, yes, Marla Gibbs deserves a star. So when you got it. <laughs> and they turned us down the first year. They turned you down the first year. But you know what? You can't say no to you. You got that star. <laughs> it's right there. I did. Right there on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, let me tell you something, ma'am. You are 91 years old, and you look fantabulous. Hold oh, on. Wait, they're giving you another standing ovation. I think somebody got that wrong. OK, we got it wrong? Yeah, you, I'm not 30. 90. Oh, you 30. She's 30. <laughs> That's every year. Every year, you 30, you stopped at 30. That's right. That's right. And, and we not mad at I you. I went back to 30. OK, you went back. I was 44 when it started out. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, if I'm 30, then I can work forever. Yeah. <laughs> that is right. And God is good. Well, God says that there is no age and there is no time if, if you're a spiritual being. And I'm a spiritual being, so I have no age, I have no time. So I choose to vibrate on 30. <laughs> now look, Miss Gibbs. Marla, you know, when you did 227, I did not know that you had so much power on 227 because you fought to get the cast that you wanted. Uh, tell me about that. Because back at that time, women didn't have a lot of power to do anything on these well, shows. Of course, um, she, she directed me too. And she's now one of the exec producers of uh, Days of Our Lives. Oh, wow, really? You know who I'm talking about. I can't, I don't remember her name, but yes. Married to Norm Nixon. Oh, oh, Debbie Allen. Debbie Allen. Debbie Allen. Debbie Allen was doing it. Yes. You know, and, and I worked with her 
when she directed me, and she directed me in um, Scandal, too. Yes, because, you know, you are on Grey's Anatomy, and Debbie Allen is directing you on Grey's Anatomy. That's what I'm saying. She's on... one of the exec producers. She's one of the... But even before Debbie Allen was an executive producer, when you were on 227, which Norman Lear created for you, this was something that you... A project that you brought to Norman Lear. Yeah, we did it as a play. Yes. And we did it for six months. And in the meantime, everybody came to see it, including the head of NBC. Yes. Brandon Tartikoff. Yes. And uh, so when Norman finally came to see it, which I had invited him, but then he heard about it and he said, I hear you have a good play. I said, yeah. He said, well, I want to see it. I said, well, you better come tomorrow because we're closing. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, well, call my office. And I did. And so he came and then he said, well, what are you doing with the play? So I said, well, I'm talking to Columbia. He said, well, have you signed anything? I said, no, they haven't got around to talking about any money. So no, I haven't signed anything. <laughs> so he said, well, call my office. He said, why don't you and I do it? Oh, wow. So I said, okay, that's home. I'm yes. already doing the Jeffersons. Yes. And, uh, but then when I got it, he had two other producers who also were African-Americans, uh -huh. but they didn't agree with anything I wanted to do. Number one, they didn't want me to have a man. Uh-uh, no. And I said, I will not do the show without a man. Yes, yes. That's Hal Williams. That's right. Yes. He did the play with me. He did the play with you. So I said, we already have the chemistry. All we need are the lines. Yes. And uh, so I fought for him. I got him, and then Jack A came in. Did they and want? She did an audition. Uh huh. And for Rose. She yeah, audition for Rose. And then she asked if she could play Sandra, and we said yes. She did, and she was hysterical. She won an Emmy. Yes. But they didn't want her. Wait a minute, they did not want Jack A. No, Mary. They didn't want no. Somebody else. They did. But I said I want her, because she's going to work. The other person I loved, but. Nobody would believe she lived in this building. She was just sophisticated, you know? Yes. But Jack A was hysterical. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And she, the, so they finally, after we... They kept saying, the network wants this person. And I said, I want Jack A. Wow. And so finally they said, OK, we're going to hire her, but we're only going to give her 7 out of 13 because she's over the top. I said, whatever. But she came on, she worked every show. She worked every show. You, you know... I love that you are, and you put this th this show together the way you want it to, which a lot of people didn't have that power back then. Now, thankfully, Debbie Allen does. But you are still working, Marla. You are in a new movie. Well, that's what you do when you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> now you see why Marla Gibbs has been working and never has stopped. <laughs> But now your new movie, which is called Bromates, uh, you are working with Snoop. Oh, How yeah. is that? That's wonderful. You <laughs> sit right here. <laughs> now, you got to tell me something, I, I know Snoop is amazing, but Snoop, he, he smokes a lot. Well, child, <laughs> they had me bring the cannabis out. <laughs> and, and I had all my favorites, so... You had I, your favorites. I named them all, and my favorite was Sweet Skunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, child, make you want to hug a skunk. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what did that Sweet Skunk make you want to do? Hug a skunk, her baby. It, it make you want to hug a, a skunk, so you and Snoop got along very well. Oh, yes. <laughs> So at one point, Snoop said, well, I know you're tired of all this fake stuff, so he wants something real. I said, you got the paramedics outside? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Marla, I, you know, you've done so much for so, for so many people, as well as in your community in Los Angeles. And I just want to give you some more flowers. I have, where, where, are, where are my flowers that I want to give? <laughs> Miss, those are beautiful. And I, I literally have to say to you, Marla, Kim Whitley and Tisha Campbell and I and Niecy Nash, we sit around and we talk about how much of an impact you have made on our careers. Yeah. And I wanted to be an actress and a comedic actress from watching 
the great ones like you. There's nobody that does it like you. And I want to say thank you for everything that you've done for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. And you know, I brought Ernie Harden here with me. You he brought came as my assistant. Who'd you bring? Ernie Harden. Ernie Harden. Ernest Harden, he played Marcus in the cleaners on the Jeffersons. He was Sherman's, well, Mr. Jefferson's surrogate son. Yes. And protege. That's right. And for was, three years. For three years on the Jeffersons. We definitely remember. And he has a new movie coming out. Oh, what's his movie? It's, it's called, um, Child. <laughs> I swear I don't have... We can look up his name. We can look up his name, Ernest Harding. We can look up his name and find his movie, because he's been so good to you. <laughs> Marla, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Please, you guys, make sure you watch Grey's Anatomy, Thursday nights at 9 on ABC. Yeah. And the movie Bromates is in theaters and on demand now. And you know who else is in demand? Marla Gibbs, okay? <laughs>